going on guys? This is a video where I'm gonna say, I told you so. I told you like two years ago. Remember when the CARES Act came out and they put in this um, mortgage, whatever it was called, where they couldn't foreclose, they couldn't do anything to these people and forbearance, that's what it was called, forbearance. And two years ago, I said that when the forbearance is ended, we were going to see an epic foreclosure crisis. Now, once again, I also said the recession is coming. Now, I was one of the first people to actually talk about recession. There were people who were saying a recession might come. Once again, the recession's baked in. Uh, the real estate correction is baked in. We're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> And another thing that is happening, we are faced with the real economy. We're faced with the naked economy. Now, like I said, two years ago, I predicted this like clockwork that, and I'm just saying this because you can go back if you care to look at the videos where I was talking about this, that the foreclosure crisis was going to be epic. This March, foreclosures have jumped 700%. Now, this is something. They weren't doing foreclosures for uh, not paying your mortgage, but they were doing tax foreclosures all along. They, was they were consistently um, doing that. But what's happening? Right now, we're faced with the real economy. And the foreclosure crisis has just got started. There were people, and I don't understand. There were people, and I know some real estate people. Uh, I know a real estate investor. She has 15 properties. And she looked into the forbearance thing. And once you enter forbearance, you can't get any more mortgages. You, you know, and that was like, hey, you know, she couldn't do it. So she didn't do forbearance. And I was saying, and here's the thing, man, and this is something that I talk about in my course, Home Economics, habits and behaviors, habits and behaviors. What do you think is going to happen to a person who doesn't have to pay their mortgage for 12 months? Now, the average person, this is not a good thing. This is not a good thing. And you've got people who've not paid their mortgage for 12 months, 18 months, and they've made some bad deals and people are going or slipping in the foreclosure. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning because here's the thing. And this, this is um, a pitch for home economics, habits and behaviors. If you have a habit of doing the wrong thing, with your money, it becomes an indebited, it becomes a dyed in wool behavior. Um, like how many of you have ever moved and you were in your old neighborhood and you start just kind of driving towards your old house and you're just like, hey, I don't live there. And you just turn around and went where you need to go. That's habits and behaviors. So these are very, very hard to break. So during the pandemic, a lot of Americans developed new habits and behaviors surrounding their mortgage. Ah, I don't have to pay it. I don't have to pay my car note. I don't have to pay my credit card. Nothing's gonna happen. And this went on for a long, long time. And once again, I mentioned this before, you know, in the military, they would only let you take leave for so long because after so long, you would lose your military behavior. It was like three months. I think the most you could take leave was like two months. And after that, mm -mm, no, 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 no. They wouldn't let you take leave. So we've had people who have lost their financial bearing because of this forbearance. Like I said, this is just the beginning. <laughs> this is just the fat lady She's still in the dressing room. She's still sitting. She's still putting on her makeup. She it ain't ready for her to go on stage yet. This is just the beginning. 
And what you're going to see is this is going to play a big part in the correction. Like there's investors sitting on the side. There are people who got cash who just waiting, 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 waiting for this correction because they're going to swoop in and buy all these properties at a discount. But you've got the people who are doing forbearance, slipping into foreclosures. You've got, uh, I don't really know how Airbnb, I don't, I, I have one friend who was doing Airbnb and it, it, they actually started liquidating the houses because they were making more money selling the houses than they were doing Airbnb because he said Airbnb got really slow for them. So um, you're going to have the foreclosures. You're going to have new houses on the market. Home builders pull 1.7 million, 7 million building permits for houses that are going to come in the market early 2023. So we got the foreclosures, we've got Airbnb people, Airbnb people selling their properties. We've got new properties coming on. I mean, it's the perfect recipe for the recession. And it's the perfect recipe for this housing. Like once again, I understand that the real estate markets, well, here's something else. All of these corporations that are buying all of these houses, they're only buying houses in 10 states. They're not buying houses in all 50 states. There are many real estate markets that are still quite affordable. So what you're going to see is this crash. The crash is going to hit Florida really, really hard. Florida's had the highest home appreciation prices of 33%. It's going to hit Florida. A lot of people are going to get caught slipping in Florida. If you're in Spokane, Washington, you want to buy a house? Go ahead and buy a house. Uh, the real estate thing has a hit there. But if you're in like Atlanta, Charlotte, North Carolina, Miami, Florida, oh, you're in for a dog fight, dog fight trying to buy a house. So this is going to be really, really nasty, but I told you this was coming two years ago. I told you this was coming because there's a lot of people in there who, who, who want to root for me to be wrong just so <laughs> I can't say that I'm right. But I want to go on record that I said that the CARES Act was a bad idea and that this was going to be a result of the CARES Act. And here we are. 700 now it's going to go up it's going to go up because here's the thing right now the world is moving back to normalcy and you have a lot of people who you know like uh i went out this weekend restaurant was packed it was packed so people are getting out and doing their things and the economy is moving back to normal but here's the problem. The stimulus money was such a big shot in the arm. Stimulus from EDIL loans, PPP loans, to the enhanced unemployment. All of this was a shot in the arm, right? And what it did was create this phantom fake economy that was living on stimulus and not true marketplace fundamentals. And what does this have to do with all of these people who are getting caught up in foreclosure? The lack of true marketplace fundamentals is the reason that they were able to enter. I'm like, um, you like right now, I talked about this with the gig economy workers. People don't even know how to go to a proper interview. Like the video that I put up the other day, um, my, my friend's son, he wore a suit to the interview and he said he was the only one in the suit. Um, once again, uh, people don't know how to act, don't have good financial behaviors and it's going to be bad. This is just the beginning. It's just for the beginning because what happened is so many of these people, they were tricking off the money instead of putting money in the bank. They were living on their money. They were taking trips and vacations instead of paying their mortgage, paying their rent. And now 
the eviction man is back. And now the foreclosure man is back. And they're like, whoa. I was watching this video where this couple was struggling. They were economically, what is it called? Instead of saying people are hungry, they have this new term called food insecurity. <laughs> right now, these people have home insecurity because they're getting ready to get kicked out their house. And it, it, it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. It's a terrible, terrible thing because this is going to keep going on. This is going to keep happening. So once again, I, I know I've said this like two or three times, but I told you two years ago this was coming. I told you this was happening. I told you this was coming, right? Because, you know, um, I'm a marketplace fundamental guy. I'm a, like, I am amazed that, you know, there are certain YouTubers who have changed up their programming. And they're, 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 sound, they're starting to sound a lot like me because anybody with any common sense can see where we're headed, where we're headed. We're, we're headed toward a recession in 2023. We're headed toward a recession. We're headed to a housing correction. Once again, if you're in, if you're in the market where, cause like the, the housing crash is going to be uneven. It's not going to be all across the United States. Florida's going to get hit really, really hard. Atlanta's going to get hit really, really hard. Texas is going to get slapped really, really hard. But like these little places where the housing prices didn't shoot up dramatically, they're not going to be, they're going to get hit, but it's not going to be as hard because the houses don't have to come down. Like Florida, where housing prices went up, I mean, I want you to think, if you had a $300,000 house, okay, and your house went up 33%, that's a $100,000 plus appreciation in one year. That is unsustainable. <laughs> you cannot have those, like, you know, it goes up, because let's say it did it to the second year, went up 33%. So your $300,000 house is now worth 420 and it goes up another 30%, now your $300,000 house is worth 500,000 in two years. To go from 300,000 to 500,000 in two years, the marketplace can't bear that. See, this is where real marketplace fundamentals are starting to kick in because you've got people with great credit, you have people with good down payments, but they don't have the income to afford this five or six hundred thousand dollar house that two years ago was three hundred thousand. So the marketplace has reached a level of where it's unsustainable. We can't keep doing this, and real marketplace forces are starting to enter the room. And this foreclosure thing, it just got started. It just got started. And like I said, anyone because you know when this pandemic thing hit no one really knew what was going to happen because it was all up in the air but from you know once again from a marketplace numbers fundamental market behavior customer behavior i knew that a lot of people were going to end up in foreclosure because of the cares act and here we are you want to know why men don't change women don't change Human behavior has not changed for the last 3,000 years. And this is why scams that worked 100 years ago still work today, because human behavior. Like, this whole thing with these uh, Zelle scams, I'm like, why don't you just check your bank balance first before you listen to someone on the phone? And so many people are getting scammed because they don't understand. They're not financially literate. They don't understand how banks work. They don't understand. But yeah, man. And I wonder if Street Money, Street Money 21, because he used to come on YouTube and it's like, yeah, man. I don't know. He was one of the first financial YouTube to, you know, to two uh, financial YouTubers. And I don't think the dude got his due. 
I don't think he got the love he should have got, but yeah, this is where we are, man. So <clears throat> what I got to say is strap up, put your seatbelt on because the ride is about to get a little bumpy for a lot of people, for a lot of people. And it's going to be um, really, really intriguing, really, really um unsatisfying for a lot of people it's going to be um there's going to be a lot of pain so do i feel that the housing correction is going to happen this summer i feel that that's too soon even with the mounting foreclosures you know it's the first of april so first quarter of 2022 is over so now this is the beginning of the second quarter I feel that we will start to see pressure and we will start to see signs of the housing correction. Um, third in the third quarter, definitely going into the fourth quarter and we're going to see the ramifications and results first and second quarter, 2023, because you know, right now the price of lumber has dropped 22%. So, I feel that's kind of elastic because there's all these builders out who are building these new homes. So I feel the price of lumber will go back up a little bit, but yeah, I, I don't see it. The big, well, I don't see the housing crash being like, bam. I see it like month after month. It's going to, it's like, it's, it's going to be building. It's kind of like an orgasm, right? You know, when you, you're hitting it and you're hitting it and then you get that little tingle and then you're hitting it boom you know you, you, you're gonna have to build up to it so i feel that we're gonna get to the housing crash orgasm second quarter 2023 and that's when it's going to be really nasty and this is when investors are going to start returning to the market because they're going to be able to find deals again at the moment it's kind of hard to find a deal that an investor would like but right now, the smart, the savvy investors who've been through this before, because this isn't the first time this has happened, they're sitting there like, okay, I'm gonna park my money. I got a friend who owns a lot of real estate. He is literally, while he can, he's gone out and he's got home, he's gotten home equity loans on all of his properties. And he's cashed it out and he's got that money in the bank because he says a buying opportunity is coming up next year. And he said, I'm going to get me some more properties and I'm going to pay cash for them. So because of his portfolio, he could play that game. He could play that game because once he goes ahead and buys these houses and he gets renters in there because the renters are paying his loans. He's not paying these loans. He's his renters are paying his loans. So um, it's going to be really, really crazy. But like, again, I told you this was coming. I told you it was coming. And there's more to come. So um, what we're getting ready to do this weekend is how to sell online with um, home economics, because I'm going to expand the time to complete that the first two weeks of April. So we'll be working on that. So that's what's going to happen. We'll be talking about how to sell stuff online using Craigslist. And uh, I'll put a little uh, blurb in here because uh, the next live training is 4 p.m this sunday 4 p.m this sunday and the link is below so you can go ahead and get in that all right so i will see you guys in the next one man this foreclosure thing is going to be rough it's going to be rough it's going to be rough